jutting out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean is one of Polynesia's greatest beauties, the Chatham Islands, or in the local Maori language, the Wari Karai. It is one of the most beautiful islands in the Pacific Ocean, and if not the most beautiful in the world. Yet it too, like many other places across time and place, has a dark history, but beautiful beginnings. Some of the first settlers of the Chatham Islands were the Mori Mori. Although based on genetic research and archaeology, it seems that the Moriori of the Chatham Islands did not come from the island around 1500. It is believed that the Moriori people came from the South Island based on the common dialects between the Nagai Tuha tribe of the Maori and the Moriori language. Knowing wind patterns in the southern Pacific Ocean, the Chatham Islands were the last part of the Pacific Ocean to be truly colonized and settled in discovery and colonization due to the colder climate of the Chatham Islands and the consistently windswept land from the ocean. It proved inhospitable agricultural society of the Polynesians of New Zealand. They could not grow their taro crops and they could not grow their roots and palm trees as they had before on the island of New Zealand. In the wake of their disappointing find and the lack of fertile soil and warm temperatures on the Chatham Islands. They would consistently eat fish, fur seals, and young seabirds. It is believed that the island held a maximum population of 2,000 people around 1800. People can find dendroglyphs, etched carvings into trees called Rekai or Mori in their local language. These figures often depict humans as well as spirits and local animals. Due to the Moriori's small population and precarious nature on the island, they embraced a pacifist culture that avoided all forms of warfare, unlike every society that has ever existed on the face of the world, except for a few others. Forms of warfare were replaced with dispute resolution and ritual fighting and reconciliation with each other. Ban on warfare and cannibalism is due to their ancestor, Nuku Wenua. There is oral tradition of the Moriori tribe based on their ancestor, Nuku Wenua. Because men got angry, and during such anger, they will feel the will to strike. That so they may, but only if a rod the thickness of a thumb and one stretch of the arm's length and thrash away. But then on an abrasion of the hide, or first sign of all blood, all should consider honor satisfies. The invaders came from the far west. The first Europeans to make contact with the Moriori was the crew of the HMS Chatham on November 29, 1791. Months after a ship and claimed them for king and country, the landing party came ashore in the far northeast of the island. Seventy years later, the Europeans would be recalled in Moriori oral tradition of containing the god of fire, given the pipes they were smoking, and likely female from the clothes they were wearing. It was this interpretation that led to the men returning from the forest to meet the landing party. A brief period of hostility was quickly calmed by the crew, putting gifts on the end of the Moriori spears, though attempts at trade were unsuccessful. After exploring the area for water, the crew again became fearful of Moriori aggression. Some misunderstanding led to an escalation of violence. One Moriori was shot and killed. HMS Chatham then left the island to follow its crew. To the Moriori tribe, this act of aggression and disappearance by the Europeans was a complete shock and abomination. It went against all their traditions of warfare and violence and let alone the Europeans went away unpunished. The Moriori were not unknown to violence, as they had originally fled from New Zealand to the Chatham Islands to escape the rigid warfare of New Zealand. And they would have heard in previous songs and ceremonies about 
of the centuries of warfare that occurred back on their southern island. Following this expedition by the British government, sealers from Sydney got word of the reputation of the Moriori as being friendly. During this time, at least one Moriori visited the New Zealand mainland and returned home with the knowledge of the Maori. As more ships came, sealing gangs were also left behind on the islands for months at a time. Sealers and whalers soon made the islands a center of their activities, competing for resources with their native population. Figs and potatoes were introduced to the islands. However, the seals that had religious significance and provided food and clothing to the Moriori were all but wiped out by the European rivals. European men intermarried with Moriori women, and soon Maori arrivals created their own village at Wirakari, which became the Maori name of the Chatham Islands. Though the Moriori did not know it, the visitors of the Maori were assigned impending doom. Soon following European immigration to the islands, the population was decimated by smallpox and influenza, killing 10 to 20 percent of the population. In 1835, displaced Nagata-Tama from the Taranaki region invaded the Chatham Islands. On November 19, 1835, the brig Lord Rodney, a hijacked European ship, arrived carrying 500 Maori men, women, and children. A party set on colonization, followed by another ship with 500 more Maori on December 5th, 1835. Unfortunately from here, unknowingly to them, it is at this point, the Moriori of the Chatham Islands face their impending doom. After November 19th on Wooden Coast, they proceeded to enslave the Moriori to kill and cannibalize others. With the arrival of the second group, here is a quote from later British officials on the nature of this invasion. Parties of warriors, armed with muskets, clubs, and tomahawks, led by their chiefs, walked through Moriori tribal territories and settlements without warning, permission, or greeting. If the districts were wanted by the invaders, they curtly informed the inhabitants that their land had been taken, and the Moriori living there were now vassals, similar to how British colonization of New Zealand. Though the Moriori was known for their pacifism, they were not to be trifled with. Two great chiefs named Tapata and Toria declared the law of Nunuku was not a strategy for survival, but to be varied as conditions changed. It was a moral imperative. Though the chiefs later agreed on peace with the invading Maori, the Maori took it as a sign of war. This one meeting precipitated a massacre, unthought and unknown to all that lived on the island, except the Maori. A Moriori survivor later recalled, the Maori commenced us to kill like sheep. We were terrified, fled to the bush, concealed ourselves in holes underground in any place to escape our enemies. It was all of no avail. We were discovered and killed. Men, women, and children indiscriminately. A Maori conqueror explained. We took possession in accordance with our customs. We caught all the people. Not one escaped. The Maori later ritually cannibalized and killed 10% of the entire population, including rituals that include staking out women and children on the beach leaving them to die in pain following several days. During the following enslavement, the Maori invaders forbade the speaking of the Moriori language. They forced Moriori to desecrate their sacred lands by urinating and defecating on them. Moriori were forbidden to marry other Moriori or Maori or to have children for each other. However, many Moriori women had children Moriori by women eventually married either Maori or European men. Some were taken from the Chatham Islands and never returned. In 1862, 
only 101 Moriori were left out of a population of 2,000. The Moriori were free from slavery by the end of the 1860s, but their small population led to a gradual decline of their culture. Only a handful of men still understood the Moriori language and culture from before the invasion. The younger generation spoke Maori, but identified as Moriori. While attempts were made to record the Moriori culture for posterity, it was believed it would become extinct. By 1900, there would only be 12 people in the Chatham Islands who identified themselves as Moriori, the last Moriori of unmixed ancestry. Tommy Solomon died in 1933. Though, there are several thousand mixed ancestry Moriori still alive today. In 1862, a letter to the New Zealand Governor George Grey was signed by 30 Moriori elders who sought the return of lands and freedom for the remaining 101 Moriori. Slavery had officially ended in 1858, but was continued in practice in the 1860s. Islands stagnated, with almost all Maori returning to New Zealand in the 1860s, some after a tsunami in 1868. Many Maori leased the land for grazing sheep to a few Pakeha men who had missed out on obtaining sheep stations in Canterbury. The government held sittings at the Native Land Court on Chatham Island in 1868 to legitimize land leases, but also to encourage Maori to remain on the Chatham Islands rather than return to war-torn New Zealand. Through the hearings, Moriori land claims were ignored or set aside. Moriori survivors gained only land for subsistence farming or in forested areas where sheep could not be mustered easily. The eight Moriori reserves amounted to less than 3% of the land's total area. In the economic depression of the 1880s, the sheep stations faltered and trade with mainland New Zealand almost ceased. Meanwhile, the various groups on the islands intermingled and intermarried to become Chatham Islanders, fiercely loyal to one each other. An economic transformation began in 1910 when fish freezing operations were set up at Kangora. The rest of the island story is told through minimal development and hard perseverance of the island's population. The island did see a booming of the fishing industry in the 1970s and 80s though this fell through due to overfishing. Today, the Chatham Islands is home to 800 people, less than half of the original Moriori settlement. The population today remains mixed between Moriori, Maori, and white settlers. Thank you for listening to the Kishishta History episode on the Chatham Islands. It was very interesting writing this piece and learning about the history of the Moriori, the Maori, and the Chatham Islands. Thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day.